previously on String Quartet Love Affair. The chord changes for another chord. Knowing the inversions is going to save us a big time because we are going to resolute this chord to this chord in the closest way possible. Now, what happens between subway stations, how we guide the melody line, it's up to us. We use the motif. We use our ear training and also common sense logic knowledge. Everything comes to that right space of our creation. We've got modern string quartet introduction written in paper. We know for certain that the chords progression represents those uh, subway stations, right? Chord resolve on the other chord, another chord becomes another chord, and so on, right? What happens between our chords is just pure creation of a knowledge of harmony movement, ear training, uh, development of your motif, and your creativity between the lines. Every single line wants to have a sense, common sense, and wants to have some kind of relationship with other voicings. For example, when I have four voicings, I would love this piece sound well on two voicings only, on three voicings only. So by eliminating one or two of them, I still want to hear the harmony movement, Right, the progression of it. And also, I want to make sure that these voicings with each other, they sound absolutely delicious. They have total sense and there is nothing what uh, keeps me from like, mm, right? There's nothing what bothers me. Okay, everything is clean. So let's just hear the whole, uh, whole quartet. So we are going to select what we have right now, we've got violin, we've got viola, we've got cello, we've got double bass. Let's take a listen. Beautiful. Now, we've got four voicings. They relate to each other. They influence each other's, right? Performance. What would happen if I eliminate bass line? So now we've got only violin, viola, and cello playing together. Let's take a listen, listen one more time. Okay, it creates this small intimate sound. 
music background for some movie, right? Some conditional, right? Music background for something else. So it's a, it's a wonderful way to kind of develop your writing when you don't have to, you see, search for the totally new piece. The music <clears throat> composition continues. And by eliminating one or two voicings, right, we could end up having a very interesting <clears throat> effect in the, in the music. For example, we are going to bring the double bass back. And this time, we are going to eliminate violin. So we've got viola, we've got cello, we've got double bass. Let's take a listen. Okay, now two voices at the same time. Which one you want? How about cello with the viola? Just a little bit. got the idea so every single voicing you see the way I see the composition as a musician but myself I would love to experience something interesting on my instrument as a French horn player I would love to play something what basically opens my heart and makes me uh, get excited about the music piece so now I think about the violin viola cello the same way I want to give them a certain voicings that they can just interact with each other and create a beautiful effect and be inspired by their melody lines they provide. However, make sure that every single line is uh, goes together with any line you want to present in that piece. So if we create eight voicings, right, in your piece, make sure that these they eight they interact well that there is no some discomfort coming from sp some notes right so they interact with each other instrumentalists have fun and they basically express the the melody line by being inspired by your piece motivated fascinated by it and believing or not these two factors will create a phenomenal result We will pursue some fun exercise. I'm going to write down on a piece of paper a bunch of chords. One of them is going to be B flat major 7. Another one D flat major 7. It's related to our previous piece. Then we are going to write G flat major seven. Okay. And for fun, we are going to present E flat minus seven and also A flat sus four. Beautiful. The bass line. Let's grab a glue. 
treble cliff, bass cliff. The bass line will go B flat, D flat, G flat, E flat, and A flat. Okay? Okay, so this is the bass line. Now, cello. See, could, could stay. Even better if it stays. And it's going to jump to B. Okay, we've got B flat with the F. F, it's a fifth of the B flat major seventh. F in D flat major seven, it's a third. Third becomes the major seventh of the G flat major seventh. And then for fun, we changed changed it to B flat, which is three of the G flat major seven. Five, the cello. Five, three, seven, and three of the previous chord. So we've got one and five, D flat major seven, so we're going to one and three. Now one and flat major seventh. And of course, G flat major seven stays, and we are adding third to it. Viola. Let's do C. C, it's nothing else, it's just ninth. One, three, five, seven, ninth. This ninth becomes major seventh. Major seventh, we like it. Could stay as a sharp eleventh of the G flat major seventh, but we wanna play nice. Let's just do a D flat. And since this is the same, see what I mean? We raise three on the cello right here on the here so when we add a C as a, f uh, as a sharp 11th of the G flat major 7 it creates this beautiful beautiful part okay so you've got we already have got three voicings how cool is that just remember F continues, F continues, F continues, and just it changes its role based on the new chords progression. Top voicing. Let's take care of the violin for now. You like G? D? D it's a three. So we've got one, five. We've got ninth. And we've got three. So now this three could become could become ninth. This is ninth of the D flat major seven. And if we 
we could we could very easily resolve this like half note half note half note half note and go from this beautiful color what we just established into something else And now we've got the G flat. I like the eight, eight flat right here, eight flat. I like it very much. And then we've got the B. The G flat continues. E flat minus seven. So look, this is a cello, this is a violin, this is a viola, this is the violin. So when we go up, it's just B flat, B flat. That's how simple this can be if we let it. And that's the game. So now, since we are repeating the same chord, it would be wonderful to create a new flavor of the same chord. So what we have on this part You like it? Which means B flat, D flat, A flat, E flat, A, A flat. And all of a sudden this chord becomes a new version, new version of E flat minus seven. It's just And what's wonderful about this is that to resolve this on E flat sus seven sus four, it's very easy because you see one note will get there. One note will get get us there. B flat becomes A, and we've got D flat, E flat. I can always raise it up. The viola. So if this is B minor, B flat major seven, fr starting from the bottom, it's major seventh, one, three, thirteenth, and ninth. Think about B flat major seven. There's a one, three, five, major seven. D flat major seven. From the bottom, one, three, five, seven. G flat major seven. G flat, B flat. D flat F. So from the bottom, one, three, five, seven. And it continues, right? Like the minor chord, it's a one flat, flat three, five, and flat seven. What if we start using inversions? Which means if I go B flat, D, F, A, so this is the first, this is the pos fundamental position of the seventh chord. Now I have to resolute it to D flat major seven. So now I'm dropping three to one, new one. This is three, this is five. 
and we've got major seventh on the bottom. When I take it to the next level, see another inversion. We've got five of the new chord, major seventh, one, and three. The minor chord is going to be interesting. I'm drumming on the one note, and it's a minor chord. E flat minor seven. the future writing you've got a minor 7 results on the d7 d7 results on the g major 7 chord the bass line could follow these guidance a d and g so now once we have stopped this is a double bass right in a string quartet Of course, one octave lower. That's the sound that we are going to get from the real instrument. Now, if I'm thinking about the cello, since we took care of one, one, and one of each chord, let's just express three of each chord. And three in a A could be C. And we are going to create C right here. And it's already sounds wonderful. See? And look what happened. Bass changes for G flat seven. This C, it's available in the new chord as a flat seventh. Do you wanna keep it? I like it. So this voice will continue. How cool is that? One and then D and continues and then results on a G and this C becomes three of the new chord which is B so this results on a B and the B in the key of G it's actually three so three flat seven three let's continue so what we have right now we've got two voices what if we add e uh, e in the key of a it's five let's just raise it up to f sharp so this will be three of the chord of g7 and how we are going to resolute it, time will tell. What we have, the first chord, second chord. And look what happened. If I keep this sharp, F sharp will become major seventh of the G chord. So how cool is that? Boom. So we kept C between A minus 7 and D7 and now we kept F sharp you see the relationships what we start building upon what is excellent now what we have so let's just the violin could provide additional color on top of what we already have what we already have looks like this hmm? So now, this top note represents flat seventh in the A minus seven chord. We like it. Let's write it down. Excuse me. So let's write it down. How we are going to resolute it? A 
So A in a Q of D, it's 5. So this flat 7 becomes 5 for the next chord. And of course, this could stay or just be resolved.